I wanted to talk about the most posted comment that I have seen on the Confused Matthew forums. And the content of this comment is so similar that you, you could replace the word Star Wars prequel with the word 2001. And the comments form is that essentially Confused Matthew didn't get it. With Star Wars, it's he didn't get it because he didn't read this or that book or read this or that comic or uh, what have you or play some video game. Usually, uh, I haven't seen the video game comment. It's usually a book. For 2001, it's you didn't get it because uh, you know you didn't understand the symbolism. You should read this lengthy article about the movie so that you understand it better. Both these comments are so striking because it reveals that people that enjoy a film will defend their enjoyment of the film in the most ludicrous way that you could. Look, you should never have to read a book or a comic or watch a television show to enjoy a movie. Let me take Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan for an example. You don't need to know anything about the characters to enjoy this film or not enjoy this film. If you know who Khan is, it does add a little bit more to your enjoyment of the film. If you don't know who Khan is, it's obvious that he's the bad guy and that you want him to fail. Let me take another example. Uh, the Two Towers movie. Going in, I, all three of those movies, I have not read any of those books. Yet, I enjoyed all three movies for what they were. I thought they were fairly long, but I still enjoyed the characters. I wanted to see the, them succeed, and I wanted to see how they succeeded and the resolution to it. I didn't really understand all of it, but I enjoyed it. Everybody did something, and everybody's character was well-defined. Had I read the books, my enjoyment might have been more. Similarly, sometimes making a movie geared towards the audience public might alienate your core fan base. A good example would be Watchmen. I spent a great deal of time talking about Watchmen because it's a very, very good film. I have not read the source material, but I have heard it said by the people that read the source material that the movie did went off too far from the source material and this bothered them deeply. I understand. The Chronicles of Narnia are a good example for me to use. The first movie is very close to the source material, the Disney version, that is. Um, the original BBC version that was produced is actually closer to the source material than the Disney one. There isn't a scene in the book when they cross a frozen uh, river. That's added in. I don't know why they added it in. I guess they just wanted some more action. But... I forgave that scene because the movie was well done, and I realized that they were reaching out to a larger audience with this movie. Prince Caspian changed the book as well. They added in a romance with Susan and Prince Caspian that is not in the original book. It's only hinted at in a later book in The Voyage of the Dawn Treader when Prince Caspian, as a very old man, mentions that he regrets, uh, or not a very old man, but as an older man, mentions that he regrets not um, courting Susan or something of this nature. It's a, it's a one-line thing that is, it's just, so, uh, it's really towards the end, and it's like almost a throwaway line, really. But my point is, it that bothered me because they were changing it. And there wasn't a, a castle siege in that book. Uh, 
they changed a great deal with Prince Caspian movie. But again, I forgave it because overall, the movie kept the core story intact, introduced us to Prince Caspian, and told us who he was and what this adventure was about. The bridge wasn't in the movie. Building the bridge wasn't in the movie. But they added that in so that there was a timer. There was a feeling of uh, when they complete this, something bad is going to happen. So it was a race against the clock. That wasn't in the original story at all. But I understand why they added it in. And I'm fine with it. I forgive it because the movie as a whole did its job. It pleased the uh public that doesn't know the source material it, it might even make somebody want to go check out the source material golden compass is a good example of a movie that fails to make you go want to go and read the source material i had heard about this movie and i thought it was going to be really good but it wasn't it sucked only a review of the book has made me interested in wanting to read the original source material. Sometimes reviews about books or movies or TV shows make you want to go and see them. But when the reviewer says, hey look, you're going to have to go watch this movie, but before you do, read this book. You know what? Well, first do a review of that book and convince me that that book is good. <laughs> And then I'm going to question the logic of why I have to read that book to enjoy that film. This is mainly geared towards the to the uh, prequel uh, comments that are seen. With 2001, you have a different sort of beast. Confused Matthew doesn't have any perception of of that the monolith means this or that this means that. You can get that from the movie if you want to, but it's just as much of a valid interpretation to see these images and say, that means nothing to me. That's just as much a valid opinion as saying that it means something to you. The movie makers set out to make a movie full of imagery that you can take whatever you want from it. You can take that it is boring, pointless, and dull just as much as you could say, hey, that represents this, or this means that. Both are valid interpretations of the film. To say that, well, you need to read this article or that article online that explains these interpretations is a lack of critical analysis. It basically means the movie failed to make you, the audience member, understand that you're meant to interpret this at all. It's a valid interpretation to say, I looked at that monolith and I thought, man, this is pointless and boring. <laughs> That's just as much of a valid interpretation to say, that monolith means something. Maybe I don't know what. Maybe I'm going to find out at the end of the film or maybe not. My interpretation of it is I don't know what the bleep I'm supposed to think about it. My interpretation is I wish this movie was a lot shorter. And maybe if it was shorter, I would enjoy the movie more. But what about the monolith or HAL 9000 or this or that? What do they mean? They mean whatever you make them to mean. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to say, this means X to me. If you decide that this means nothing to you, that's just as valid as saying that this means something to you. To say that it must mean something means that the filmmakers failed to make you realize that you're supposed to interpret these things at all. So... Maybe the filmmakers set out to make them ambiguous. Even so ambiguous to the point that somebody is going to walk away saying that it means nothing to them. And that's just as valid because that's if that is what the filmmakers intended, then it's a valid response.
That's all I got for you. Take care. Peace out.